Hey everybody, KC Zero VII Tom. It's a gorgeous morning here in North Iowa, and better yet, I'm off from work today. The local power company is changing out the electric meters on houses in the area, and I just want to be around when they did that. Um, getting a lot of questions. Uh, gas prices must be going up. Getting questions about the car. Uh, that's one way I can tell when people are really serious about you know the type of vehicle I drive. The, and the main question is how much money I'm saving on my hybrid. Now the problem is I don't own a hybrid. I own what is called a range extender. Um, I drive a Chevy Volt. This is a 2013 Chevy Volt. The hybrid is a car that will run on the electric battery till it's depleted or till you get up to about 40 miles an hour then a gas engine will kick in and that will propel the car down the road with the battery. A range extender is an electric car with a gas engine that runs a generator you know so you're always pulling power off the battery or from the generator to push you down the road the depending on the model year of the car the chevy volt it's like certain circumstances that will allow the generator to actually the electric motor to actually touch the um, drive the wheel so and that's most of the time about 99 percent of the time you're running on some battery or electric energy uh, the volt came out in 2011 uh, mileage on the battery on average was 35 miles in each year of production that mileage has gone up uh, from 11 to 15 is known as the first generation and or gen 1 for short this is a 13 I get 48 miles in the summertime on the battery and down to about 32 in the winter and we'll talk more about that from 16 to 19 model year that is known as the second generation and those cars are short for Gen 2, and they're, last time I checked, the guys who are driving the 19s are stating, and women, are stating they're getting the mid-60s. And again, this is gonna depend on your driving habit. If you drive quick starts and stops, hard acceleration, you get less mileage. If you drive like an old person, you can actually increase that mileage on the battery. The car charger is actually located up in the front fender right behind the headlight. Uh, so you want to make sure if you ever get in an accident, don't get hit there. The EVSE cord, a power cord is what you use to plug the car in. And what this is in the toolbox, I just mount the uh, control box in that toolbox just to uh, keep it out of the weather. Inside here, this is a fact, uh, industrial standard, uh, automotive standard connection. And what this has is the two big lugs on top are considered L1 and L2. Um, on your line voltage come in the center one and the big one in the bottom is your neutral and the two small guys is a communication port the l1 charger which you have one that does come with the car runs on 120 volts plugs into a standard outlet um, the chevy volt has two charging rates with an 8 amp and it takes roughly 14 hours to charge the car from a depleted battery or 12 amps and it'll take about 10 hours the L2 charger, which we have back here, is 240 volts, and the volt will draw, will draw 16 amps, and it takes roughly three and a half hours to charge it. On some of the other electric vehicles, along with the Chevy Spark and the Chevy Bolt, the OLT, there is an L3 charging option, and right where my fingers are, there are two extra connection points on this um, plug. And what that does, it will actually put DC voltage right to the battery from the control box. Um, and you can get almost a full charge on the car in roughly an hour, uh, faster charging. One thing you notice on all the electric cars when you do plug them in and charge, since you're putting voltage in to that battery, you're going to generate some heat. Uh, so you're going to notice that the air conditioner is going to kick on and the fans or the pumps. Uh, the battery pack in the Volt is water cooled. So you'll notice a lot of times when you're just plugged in, you walk by the car, you can hear the circulation pump running and the air conditioning going. So don't be alarmed for that. It's normal. It's alive. So let's take a look inside and see what we got. Let's get out of the wind here. Like most new cars, when you get into the Volt, it does the little melody and shows displays on the screens. I'll get my seat belt here so we can get going. Like most cars now, uh, foot on the brake, power button. 
we'll start the car up. Uh, again, this is a electric vehicle with a uh, electric or gas motor that returns a generator. So if you look at the dash, we have on the right hand side our little energy efficiency ball. Uh, trick is to try to keep that in the center. It will rotate as you go down the road. Braking hard will force the ball to drop to the bottom of the screen where it will turn yellow. Hard acceleration will cause the ball to go up to the top of the screen and also turn yellow. Just the uh, game you play as you're going down the road. On the left hand side you can see there is a range for the electric battery and that is determined from the last charge the last trip on a charge if you drive aggressively that number will drop if you drive conservatively like an old person it will uh, increase and above that grayed out is the range on what gas is in the fuel tank it has a nine gallon fuel tank so the car is fun to drive it uh, goes through snow fairly good um, one of the weird uh, deals I've come across that uh, uses low resistant tires which when you get down in the single digits and below zero they they're a little greasy but as long as you're aware of it it's not that big of a deal it's just when you go around a corner the front end may snap you know pop out a little bit or the back end may slide but once you're aware of it it's real good we've had this car for five years and I've not yet gotten stuck uh, my commute to the college and back is 56 miles uh, a lot of times in the morning, I'm cutting my path in the snow. I'm out usually before the snow plows, unfortunately, with my job. And then it goes through snow pretty good. I, uh, I've actually had pushed snow so hard with the front bumper, it's come up on the hood of the car. So The A-pillars up front, when we get down the road, you'll notice these A-pillars are extremely large. So it's just one thing you have to, again, be aware of. So The car has uh, four drive modes. Um, it's electric car so it always defaults out to normal sport mode it just remaps the accelerator pedal we do not have a gas pedal mountain mode is if you're going up a steep uh, grade then there's hold mode we'll get back to normal the, the gas engine that runs the generator has four idle speeds uh, when the engine kicks on it's normally running at a constant speed one thing um, you'll do is you know for best efficiency and best mileage the low speed is used in the winter time when the coolant level gets to a certain temperature it may force what we call engine running due to low temp uh, if the outdoor air temperature is at a, a set point or below it will run that to warm up the, the coolant in the engine the battery is liquid cooled so it keeps that warm in the electronics and the uh, water loop for the passenger compartment uh, that is on the 13s here that is selectable for 25 degrees outside temp or 15 degrees outside temp um, so on that when you're in hold mode it will run the engine at a 50 you're at the medium level uh, it takes a snapshot of the battery and allow the battery to charge up 1% above that level or, or discharge 1% low it uses the battery as a buffer the medium high as we call it is used when you're in mountain mode again if you're going up a steep grade they recommend that you put it in mountain mode 30 miles before there uh, this is the only mode that will actually put a charge in the battery it'll charge the battery up to 50 percent if it's above 50 percent uh, the engine may not start uh, but when the battery does drop down to 50 percent the you know the engine will start to maintain that the idea is then you have the gas engine running the generator and the battery to propel you up the mountainside. The high speed is used if during the winter time if the battery gets below a certain temperature it will lock out the battery. It will start the generator on that high speed to warm up the battery on the interior of the car. One thing I found out it takes like five or six miles for that to uh, warm the car up. So the battery again I said is liquid cooled. The computer does a good job maintaining the temperature in the in the battery as you're going down the road if you're plugged in it'll actually kick on the heating elements to keep the battery warm and when you are charging the car don't be surprised if you hear the coolant pumps running um, and the air conditioner if it's too warm down there the display um, 
energy information screen. It tells you how many miles you've gone on gas, electric, how much gas you've used, how much electricity, the instant uh, miles per gallon at the moment, and also the lifetime of the car. Right now we're getting 89.6. The car, for, for my driving in the wintertime, the my lifetime MPG will drop down to like 82, and in the summertime it'll go up to like 101 to 105. Uh, another little quirk that I found out is I might like I said my commute's 56 miles and we're at 41 miles in the range uh, so I'll start the, the morning out for the first say 10 miles on the generator then switch over to the battery let the engine warm up the car and the battery and when I leave work I do the same thing drive a couple miles on the, the gas engine then switch over so we'll uh, get going here we'll switch over to the power flow uh, a lot of the students at the automotive department, they like the screen the best. It shows the battery, the generator, and the wheels. Um, go R. The car does have standard drive selection. You got park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. We'll talk about low here in a little bit. The car is fun to drive since it's an electric motor it does have torque instantaneously again if you drive take it easy you get good mileage if you hammer the throttle you'll get poor mileage on the uh, battery as we will get out here as you can see the got a little arrows flowing out of the battery to the electric motor and spin the wheels and I'll let up here it's close up to the stop sign the car has regenerative braking now the controller has turned the drive motor into a generator and it's, the wheels are turning that generator causing drag to slow the car down and then is also putting that energy back into the battery also by shifting into L you can get a more aggressive regenerative braking on it. So, now we'll drive out of town here to the Cedar River south of St. Ansgar and we'll uh, turn around, turn on the generator, and come back in the hold mode. Another little quirk that I found, I won't call it a quirk, but it's kind of an interesting deal. If you're driving on the road and you're going below 60, you get better range if you drive in normal mode if you're going faster than 60 I run it in hold mode run it on the uh, gas engine generator um, to uh, it's more efficient on those higher speeds the car does have a governor I've been told it's 101 miles an hour the governor will keep you at that speed the, the car again this is an electric car you can go that fast if you want to I've never been that fast in this vehicle so it's uh, but it'll use up more of your battery at a faster rate to propel that fast on the road we get out here and get her up another little quirk i found when you're driving if i drive 53 instead of 55 i can get an extra three to five miles out of the range just due to the fact here in north iowa we're on a fairly flat terrain um, where we have a river cut through like here where the cedar river is the uh, that's where we get our hills here so we get a little close up shot again the car is real fun to drive it's uh, really quiet it has a pedestrian horn to uh, allow you to give a gentle reminder to people if you're going through a parking lot slow that you're there the Gen 2s, they have a feature, it's a beeping device on the grill. When you're going through a parking lot, you'll beep do that automatically. They, there's been a lot of talk on some of the news groups about if uh, that's a wave file or mechanical source device, if you could actually change that wave file to like a, a big old Hemi motor idling. Um, it'd be kind of cool if you could do that, but it sounds more like it's just a uh, mechanical device. So. You can see we're down near the bottom of the RV, the River Valley, and the uh, electric motor is now turning into a generator. You know, do this off time as we can get slowing down here. Let's see, we 
talk about the A pillars are quite large. The low resistant tires, when it gets down on the single digits below zero, uh, they get a little greasy. It loves goes through snow very good. Your speed is a big factor that will determine how much range you get on your battery. And we'll select, go from normal, sport, mountain, and hold. And nobody's coming. Now what's going to happen since the engine is cold, you know, 60 degrees out, they will start the engine up on a low RPM, warm up the oil, warm up the coolant. And when it comes up to temp, it'll go up to that medium idle speed and the battery will be grayed out, it'll lock the battery out. What it did, it took a snapshot of the battery level and it's going to allow the uh, generator to put a charge about 1% up and discharge 1% down. When you pull up to a stop sign and the battery's full and the generator is running as you're at the stop sign, since the energy is not needed, it will shut off the, the gas engine. And the first couple of times it does that, it's uh, quite interesting. So, get a little slow down here. Yeah, this car is one problem I have with it is it's so quiet and so smooth. If you're not careful, you can speed it very easily. I have to use cruise control quite heavily when I go to work on the days I can run it. Uh, for five years, we've never been stuck in the snow. Uh, I have not yet got a ticket, been given a warning, then the officers decide you want to know more information about the car. As you see, the battery got grayed out, and we're running on generator now. Now that we're putting, slowing down a little bit, coming to the speed zone, it's dumping that energy into the battery. Since the motor, electric motor, is torque is instantaneous, it can really put you in the seat. If you've ever been up in Austin, Minnesota, uh, the main east-west roads are a one-way Oakland Avenue goes west and First Avenue goes east, you know, and it's a one-way. We were, Joyce, TLJ and I came out of a club meeting, radio club meeting up there at the Austin Amateur Radio Group and came up to the first stoplight there by the uh, club, Voice Forever Club. There was a couple young gentlemen in a Camaro revving up the engine and when the light turned green I floored it and he was quite the look on his face was quite surprising he didn't expect something to uh, break out of the you know the starting grid like that left him behind it took a couple blocks for him to catch up to me and um, when he did finally catch up to me we had to slow down for the next red light when that turned green he was more ready for it and we stayed side by side for a few blocks till the next one so Again, torque is extremely fast on this car. Um, I peeled off at that stop light. There's a uh, public charging station down at one of the city parking lots. We parked there and walked over to the pizza store, uh, George's Pizzas, and get a pizza with some of the club members. Well, they swung around and started, rolled on the wheel of the car, their car, their little Camaro, and started asking me all these questions about what type of car it was. And so I thought it was quite interesting. It cost me roughly a dollar ninety now uh, to charge the car each night, so we can round that up to uh, we'll say two dollars a day. Thirty days in a month will give you sixty dollars. The gas in the car, or during the summertime, I can get just over a month. In the winter time, it's less than a month between fill-ups. And the last time I put gas in this, it was like twenty-two dollars and fifty cents for the eight and a half gallons. So we'll just round that up to 25 So that's $85 a month to drive the car for my commute to work. Compared to my old car, which was a 97 Chrysler Concorde, which was roughly $40 a week times four weeks, uh, brings up to about 160 So there is a, quite a bit of savings um, by switching to a range extender. Or even if you had a hybrid. I mean, I've talked to the people at work. A couple of the instructors at work have the, the Priuses and uh, their energy, you know, the, the amount of money they saved doing that is quite good compared to the car they went from. The car does have a delayed charge feature. If you have a utility company that gives you an off rate, Compared to peak rate, peak rate, 
Um, I don't know if Align Energy or my power company, if they offer that here at St. Ansgar, we're actually on what they call um, a usage rate. Uh, the meter measures the biggest peak, the biggest demand, and that's for the month, and that's ran through a formula. Then it is um, the calculation comes up with how much we owe for the month. So if we can delay charge us in the evening when she's not running the gas dryer or the um, electric range, and it's just a car charging, uh, it's a you know, cheaper way to charge your vehicle and cheaper, cheaper way to use electricity. Like I said, we're on what they call a peak or peak usage. There are uh, peak and unpeak rates or off-peak rate where the, the cost per electricity is less. Regenerative braking does save you a lot. I got 96 miles on this car and I've not yet done brakes on it. Um, again, you can also put the regenerative braking by shifting to L. The Gen 2 has actually got a, a paddle, like a shifting paddle up here that do a, will also engage those. One thing, if you do use the regenerative braking on the Gen 1s, that will not light your brake lights. It, uh, so you gotta be careful. It's sort of like downshifting in a manual transmission shut the car off the energy screen will pop up here we've gone 2.5 miles on electric 1.9 miles on gas 4.4 total 0.8 kilowatts 0 0.07 gallons and gives us about 67 miles per gallon that miles per gallon is kind of skewed because it is showing the total mileage against what little bit of gas we have uh the gen 2's regenerative braking when you do that that will kick on the, the brake lights i've been told so um all in all a little windy outside so we won't have to worry about that all in all the car is quite fun to drive it will uh get your you know a lot of people's attention once they realize what it is it's you know it's an electric car first year i had it at work everybody thought i was driving a malibu or a cruise i didn't realize it was a volt um to pull, well, i'll show you how easy it is to charge it up the l2 charger like i said i have it in this box just to protect it from the weather um what i'd like to do we got to do some remodeling around here make a little wooden structure uh, the plug just simply plugs in this is the charge port on the dash I don't know if you can see it in the Sun there's a little light that's orange when you connect after communication is made it turns green a single beep means that you are charging a double meet beep means you're in delayed charge like I says it's Fun to drive. If you want to save some money and you're looking for a, a better vehicle than what you're currently driving, uh, take a look at the Chevy Volt. Chevy does make the electric uh, version of the Spark. They call it an eSpark. Um, one thing we're going to do, uh, her PT Cruiser here is getting kind of long in the tooth. One thing we're going to start doing is looking for the Bolt, which is the small SUV crossover that Chevy has come out here in the last few years which is told totally electric uh, 240 miles on a charge uh, it will reduce some of your charge in the winter time uh, talking to some of those guys in some of the used groups uh, websites they're seeing as high as 300 miles in the summertime then in the winter time it will drop down to the 200s uh, there's a couple guys in Minneapolis and a gal that have them and during the cold snap this year, one of them reported it went down to 150 miles on her range. But she was running the heater, excuse me, heater in the car quite heavily, going to work, coming home. But once she switched over to the heated seats and the steering wheel and wearing a little heavier jacket, you know, she brought that back up to 200. So it's kind of a comfort trade off, you know, for me personally. Uh, next vehicle we get, we'll have the heated seats and steering wheel. I do prefer it kind of cold in the car, cool. Uh, TLJ likes it warm. And yeah, again, it's just personal. But like I said, all in all, it's been a fun car to drive. I really enjoy owning it. It is saving me some money. So be sure to tell your friends and neighbors about the, pro, uh, the channel. If you have any questions, comment below. Be sure to like. 7-3, everybody.